Stand with us for prayer and for reading of the Word of God. That sounds better. And we're going to get right into the message tonight. Father, I want to thank you for victory. We know where victory comes from. Victory comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight, Heavenly Father, we're praying that you would move as we minister your Word. We find your power in your word. I know, Lord, sometimes maybe we don't understand the importance of the word of God, but it was your word that you sent and healed them. It was your word that you sent by a centurion that healed his servant. It was your word that calmed the storm. More important than that, Lord, it was your word that created everything that is. 
So what we're saying tonight, Lord, and what we're bringing out here, the Word of God is actually the power of creation. Help us to grasp that by faith, that if it, the Word of God could create a sun, moon, and stars, and everything that is, what in the world can it do in our lives? Help us to understand. Help us to be anointed by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of St. John tonight, I want us to read here uh, in, in chapter 8, in the book of St. John. I want us to read beginning with verse 31, and we'll read on down a few verses here. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, You shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whomsoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In verse 32, he said to those disciples, after he had said to them in verse 31, or to the Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word... Not words, not plural. This book is one, it's the Word of God. It's the one Word of God. Then are you my disciples indeed. And we could get to that next verse. He said, you shall know the truth, then the truth shall make you free. But let's read it a little differently. And we're not violating the context at all. We're just helping us understand a little bit what he's saying a little bit better. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And if you continue in my word, that's right, it's not written, but that's what it implies, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Then, of course, verse 36, he said, Therefore, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. There's a couple of things here. The Word of God is truth. And the only way you follow truth is follow the Word. But we misquote these verses. We misquote these verses sometimes, and maybe it seems very innocent, and I guess it is. We don't, certainly don't mean any harm. But maybe it changes the meaning just a little bit. Now that I've read this to you a couple of times, if I was to ask you the question, what did Jesus say in verse 32? And what did he say in verse 36? And without looking, you would recite to me and quote to me what he said. I'm telling you what you would say. I'm telling you exactly what most of us would say, I would probably say, if I was sitting where you are, if I'd say, quote for me, John 8, 32, so many times we would say, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's not what he said. That's not what he said at all. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth shall make you free. Now, we talk about freedom, and we can look at it in a lot of different ways. You know, different types of bondage, but uh, I guess maybe the easiest way, and maybe it's still fresh on your mind, is that guy in prison, in jail, incarcerated. There was a man in Alabama a few days ago that a lady working in that jail set free. Was he free? She set him free. She opened the door and he came out, but he was still a prisoner. 
Now, how could he have been made free? If he had gone before a judge, if he had gone before a judge and presented his case to that judge, pleaded guilty or whatever, that judge would have had the power to make him free. But because he was only set free by that lady guard, he is now back in jail. But if that judge had made him free, they would have not picked him up in West Virginia and brought him back to Alabama. Do you see the difference? I don't want to be set free. I don't want God just to take away the shackles and the chains. I want him to make me a free person, set free, delivered, not the same as I used to be. It's called being born again. You may set yourself or help yourself or God. God may help set a man free. If a man will pray and seek God, God can help that man and set him free from drugs. God can set that man free from alcohol. God can set that man free from pornography. God can set that woman free from anything. But ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. She's still a slave to sin. I don't want God just to set me free from a temper. I don't want God just to set me free from an attitude and the rest of me still be bound up in some other sin. I want God to make me free. In other words, I want to be born again. I want to become a new creature in Christ. And this is what he said. We could add a little commentary here. This is the, the, the Kenny Morris commentary, whom the Son shall set to the Son, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you to become another person, a free person, a person that's been set free. But God's tool of freedom, God's method of freedom, what does God free a man by? He frees him by the truth of the Word of God. There's so many of us tonight, oh my, we've laid down a lot of things, right? But yet and still, we still are not enjoying the freedom that we should have in Christ. We've got folks in this house tonight. Oh dear God, it's been a many a moon since you've done some of the things you used to do. It's been a long time. A lot of Mother's Day, Father's Day have passed since you were once involved in what you were involved in. But yet you're still not free like you want to be free. You're not free in that mind. You're not free in that spirit there's still agitation there's still trouble there's still things that keeps you oh say amen to me keeps you away listen God wants us free he doesn't want to just take off a shackle he wants to make you a free person a free man a person that is totally as I preached you Sunday night and we're just continuing on a person that is totally at rest because of the words of their king God said it. That ought to set us free. Now, as we look at this thought tonight, what is truth? We're going to explore the truth that sets us free. We could go on in the book of John. John talks about truth a lot. Amen. John found truth and he talked about it a lot. Pilate appeared before Christ in chapter 18 and he said to him, Pilate entered in to that judgment hall, asked Jesus, art thou a king? Jesus said, you say that I am. I don't know if it's from you, if somebody told you. And Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. That's exactly right. Art thou a king then? But but then Pilate said, what is truth? What is truth? Jesus said, thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born for this cause. Came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Amen. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. In other words, he said, the voice of God is a thing that's going to set you free. The voice 
voices of this world are the things that bind us. The voices of this flesh are the things that causes us our trouble. I'm telling you, there's some of us tonight, our insides are tied in knots. Why? Because we've heard the voices of this world. We've heard what the enemy has to say. We've heard what the devil has to say. But he said, if you'll listen to me, I'll untie those knots out of your gut and you can go out of here a free man and you can go out of here a free woman. You say, preacher, God's got to fix all the problems. No, God's not going to fix all the problems of the world. We know that from the Word of God. But God may not fix that problem. The Word of God may not fix that problem because that crowd doesn't believe. But the Word of God can fix you and the Word of God can fix me. And what matter is it if the problem's still out there, if I've been set free, I've been untangled from it because my faith is in God and my faith is in what God has said. God, help us. Give us deaf ears to the voice of the world. Give us ears that are deaf to the voices of sin. Give us ears that are deaf to the voices of evil. That's exactly right. They march in that street. Their voices are evil. But God walks up and down the aisles of this church and his voice is freedom and his voice is deliverance and his voice is that that causes us to be a creature that's not affected by this world in our soul. Oh dear God, I want to tell you the freedom I'm talking about, you can shout next door to hell. The freedom that I'm talking about, you can shout when the world's caving in. The freedom I'm talking about, you can and sang when the money's gone. My God, don't you want... Oh, God. You know what's wrong with us? We've lived in this bondage of fear and worry and anxiety so long that we feel like it's a sin not to worry. Don't everybody, don't everybody get happy right there just yet. I actually had a man tell me one time, he said, I believe God expects us to worry. That's what he said. I looked at him and I said, Brother, I believe God expects us to have faith and to believe. Were, ladies and gentlemen, the bondage of fear, you heard something. The bondage of worry, you heard something. The bondage of anxiety, we heard something. Well, preacher, it's true. Truth? Is it true? It's what the world out there is saying. Is that truth? You don't know what that is. But I'll tell you what is true. The Word of God's true. And I'm going to tell you what this book said. He said, let every man be a liar, but let God be truth. You let all those voices talking to you out there, let that be voices of lies. You say, well, preacher, it's a lie. Oh, my God, how can you say it's a lie? When you visit a hospital today and there's a little woman. The sun's sinking low. The shadows of her life have grown long. And all they say, oh, I know what they say. You say, well, is that a lie? Well, you say what you want to say. But what I heard was that Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for her. What I heard was Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. My God, that doctor said it worries me to death if I let it. But when God said, help man, and Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And when that spirit leaves that body, I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God that's not a bad dark scene. When that spirit leaves that body of that child of God, there are angels standing there. Glory be to God. There are angels standing there to take possession of that spirit, to take possession of that soul and to usher that soul into the presence of God. That's exactly right. If we have the eyes, oh God, oh God, the servant of that 
prophet heard a lie. Somebody told that servant that the mountains are surrounded with armies. Somebody told that servant that the man of God, Elisha, we're going to die. But Elisha said, listen, boy, going to pray for you. And he prayed for him. And the scales were moved from his eyes. And he heard another voice. And he said, there's more for us than there are against us. Those that be with us are more than those that be with them. Brother and sister, in every situation, listen for the voice of God. When Jesus stood before Pilate, when Jesus stood before Pilate, let me tell you what he was facing. He was facing a beating. He was facing a beating with a whip that many men had died when they were tied to that whipping post. When they were tied to that post, beaten with that Roman scourge, that cat of nine tails. Oh, God, I've read that thing. I, I've studied it. They said that was a long whip, had nine thongs on the end. The law said you can only hit a man 40 times. You can't give him more than 40 lashes. Man's always looking for a way to get around the Word of God. And so they put one whip and put nine ends on that thing. And I'm just going to hit him 40 times. Now, oh, they were so religious. They wouldn't even hit him 40. They'd, they left one off just in case they miscounted. But that bunch of hypocrites, great. God, that was 360 times less nine, which would be 351 times when there's only supposed to be 40 because every lick was nine. They multiplied it nine times. That's what he's waiting on. Many men died at the whipping post. Many men died. That thing, we are told, would literally cut a man open, disembowel him, and many times the bowels of that man being beaten would fall out at his feet and there he would die before he ever got to the cross. What's waiting on him? A crown of thorns with corns, they say, three inches long and they're going to take that thing, set it down gently upon his head. No, you know better than that. They're going to take that crown, that soldier with some gloves or hand protection, take that crown, slap it down on that head, twist it, grind those thorns into the skin of that skull till it hit that bone. Oh, dear God, what's ahead of him? They're going to pluck the hair out of his cheeks. They're going to make him tote a cross up Golgotha. Then they're going to nail him to that cross. Oh, God, then a soldier's going to come by with a spear thrust it in his side. Blood and water's going to come out. He's doing all that for you, you know. Blood and water's going to come out. Oh, my, but how, how? How could he say? Amen. Standing before Pilate, he said, Pilate said, what is truth? A man facing all of these things says to Pilate, says unto him, I've come to bear witness to truth. Is it true you're going to die? Is it true you're going to be beaten? Is it true you're going to be hanged on a cross? No. What was true was that all of that was in the Word of God. What set him free? You know why he was free? All of that had been prophesied by the word of God. There's coming a day, ladies and gentlemen, that moon's going to turn to blood. There's coming a day when that sun's going to scorch men's back. It's true because it's the word of God. But what in the world, how can a man be free facing that kind of torture? Why? Because he's not looking at the thorns. He's not looking at the beating, but he's looking at that Sunday morning when he's coming out of that grave. He's looking at that Easter where an angel's going to come, roll that stone away. He's looking at three days that he's going into the heart of the earth. He's going to preach the spirits in captivity. Beat my back. Put a crown of thorns on my head. But when I come out of that grave on Sunday, I'm going to bring some of the saints with me. And you're going to see them walking around in the streets of Jerusalem. Is it a death angel or is it an angel of life? that's coming to liberate a soul and taking a soul to glory. You say, preacher, you're crazy. No, I just looked at truth. Truth, it's not an old man. Woo! I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about a child of God. It's not the grim reaper. 
Not that at all. No, sir. It's not an old death angel clothed in black, black with a scythe in his hand coming to reap the harvest of life. That's not it at all for the child of God. What did he say? He said at the end of the age, and I know that's prophetic, the end of the age of the gospel and all of this, I know that. But at the end of your age, he said he's going to come and gather the wheat into the barn. Glory be to God. Amen. My little old grandmother died. You listen to me. She died. Oh, I don't know. Oh, been 20 something years ago now back about uh, some nineties, whatever when she went on to glory we went to that funeral home I've told you we went to the funeral home I'd visited her a few days before uh, a couple of weeks and she lay there in that bed she knew nothing at all lay there with those eyes closed and making no move and about every 15 minutes or so she'd open her eyes and say let's pray and we'd pray my uncle said to me you stay with mama you stay prayed up every time she'd come around just a little she'd want to pray oh God then I went to that funeral home to visit the night of that visitation he looked at me and said let me tell you Kenny let me tell you how mama died let me tell you how she left this world I'm talking about freedom I'm talking about being made free I'm talking about not set free from this that or the other but made a free man and a free person. That little girl gave her heart to God in a meeting in a schoolhouse back when my dad was a child. You listen to me. She endured hardship. My dad told me how that his father, my grandfather, her brothers, his uncles would get drunk on that moonshine liquor, sit around and talk about my grandmother, how she had disgraced the family because she's a holy roller now. She's a tongue talker now. She's disgraced the family and them drinking rot gut whiskey. My grandmother disgraced the family because she's born again and she talks in tongues. He said, let me tell you how she died. He said, I knew it was coming. I knew the end was there. But he said, I was holding that frail little old body in my arm. He didn't see a grim reaper. Neither did she. She said, mama, he said, mama, hadn't said anything in quite a while. But I saw that breath was getting shorter. That heart beat was getting weaker and all of a sudden all of a sudden he said my mama your grandmama opened her eyes and looked up toward that ceiling and said open up them gates and she's gone hallelujah she didn't see an angel in a dark robe with a sickle but she saw an angel of light that had come to set her free from a broken body to set her free from a frail body how can that happened preacher because as a young mother she was set free by the word of God when a man by the name of Sam Breeland preaching in an old Copeland Alabama schoolhouse preached to my grandmother the gospel and the word of truth convicted her of sin the word of truth convicted her that she was a sinner and she went to that altar gave her heart and life to God ladies and gentlemen we got men and women living in sin but they'll tell you they're saved we got men and women every day of their life living habitually in sin but they'll tell you they're saved they'll tell you they're right with God they're listening to the wrong voice they're listening to a voice of deception they're listening to a voice that has come to deceive to steal and to kill and to destroy but I remember when truth told me I was lost I remember when truth told me I was a sinner and I remember when I responded to that truth that another word of truth set me free for whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved then he said let him that nameth the name of God depart from iniquity have you been saved have you been born again then you're free hallelujah let this word go to hell. That's where they're going anyhow. They're going because they want to. But I'm not on that bus. I'm not on that train. He got my God. Somebody say amen. I'm headed to heaven. The truth of God. Amen. Listen. 
Listen, I cannot be in the kingdom of God if I don't accept the truth of God. For truth is the spirit of his kingdom. He came into this world to bear witness of the truth. He told that to Pilate. Now truth, he is the king. He is the king. But he's not the king of, of Ellisville, not the king of Mississippi, not the king of Alabama, not that at all. What is he? He is the king of truth. Hallelujah. What is his kingdom? His kingdom is true. Where is his throne? His throne, ladies and gentlemen, in this world is found in the pages of this book right here. Thy word is truth. That's exactly right. And so this kingdom is the spirit of truth. The foundation of his kingdom is truth. His kingdom exists in truth. His kingdom operates in truth truth. His kingdom is governed by truth. His kingdom conquers by truth and his kingdom will deliver us out of this world by truth. Believe it or not, it doesn't matter. The world may not believe it, but, but Mary did. When that angel came to Mary and told her the truth, the truth does not fit the public narrative. Truth does not fit the narrative of the world. Truth does not always fit the narrative of nature. Truth, all oh, say amen to me somebody you say preacher what are you saying truth of God supersedes all everything out there there's nothing ladies and gentlemen that ever supersedes truth when an angel came to a little girl by the name of Mary and he said you're chosen among women blessed art thou among women oh dear God what do you come to see me for Mr. Angel I come to tell you that you're going to have a baby come to tell you that you're going to birth a son. I come to tell you, she said, how can this thing be? How can it be sin? I've never known a man. I'll tell you how it is. The laws of nature said for a woman, my God, just listen carefully to me. The law of nature says for a woman to birth a child, she's got to know a man, and you understand that. Not just say, how do you do, sir? She's got to know a man. That's exactly right. But the truth of God superseded that, and he said you are going to be the mother of that Messiah. How can it be? He said because the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you, the spirit of truth. Well, that's exactly what the Holy Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. I've seen men and women walk away from situations where they ought to die. They ought to die. There's no, my God, no way to live. But the spirit of truth was there. The Holy Ghost was there. And ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter. Listen carefully to me. They can pass whatever law they want to pass. I'm subject to the law of truth. Mary believed in her heart. What did she believe? She believed that the truth of God, the word of God can perform in me that the nature itself cannot perform. Do you believe that the word of God can perform in you? Oh my, that that no man can perform at all. What are you saying, preacher? I said, what are you saying? It can put joy in your heart in the midst of sadness. It'll show you the backside of that coin that looks so gloom here but back there it's so beautiful my God I wish somebody had praised him I want to hear truth I want, I want to know truth about my God my heart my word my family I want to know the truth listen it, knowing the truth is not mental knowing the truth is not psychological knowing the truth is not memorizing a verse of scripture ladies and gentlemen how can one be of the truth it's not Oh, dear God, it's not what you know. It's not what you've memorized. No, sir, ladies and gentlemen, but when you become a creature of truth, there's something like Mary when a baby was conceived in her womb. Truth, truth causes something to be conceived in your womb that nothing else will put there. There's not a pill that I put in Mary's body what truth put in her body. There's not an idea that can put
put in Mary's body what truth put in her body. My God, somebody help me preach. There's not a psychiatrist can put in her body what Holy Ghost truth put in her body. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the same thing that caused the baby to be conceived in the midst of her body in an impossible circumstance, that same truth can conceive joy. It can conceive peace. It, my God, it can conceive contentment over shadow of Holy Ghost. We've got some barren people in the church. We've got some people whose wombs are barren, not with babies, God, but they're barren. They're empty on the outside. Oh, God, they're empty inside because truth has not implanted the seed of victory in their heart. The spirit of truth overshadowed Mary. And day by day and week by week, that's that that had been planted in her womb and her body by the Holy Ghost grew in her. She knew it was there. She knew truth, brother and sister. Truth will help you to endure whatever comes. You look at Mary another minute or two here. We're going to move on. But you look at Mary. Truth. She knew the truth. She knew truth. Number one, she knew she was a virgin. Number two, she knew she was going to have a baby. And number three, she knew how she was going to have a baby. That seed was planted there by the Word of God. The people at the marketplace laughed at her. The pe Oh, my God, not her. Joseph took her and hid her. But when old Joseph went to work, they called him a fool. They talked about Mary. They criticized Mary. They looked down at Mary. Oh, God, you know what? You know what? Oh, God, oh, my. When a man shouted at the funeral of his mother when a man shouted and praised God at the funeral of his mother the congregation thought he lost his mind oh I know you're going to cry I know you're going to shed tears but when he stood at that altar and said the Holy Ghost bears witness in my heart that my mama's in heaven she's in the presence of God Why not? oh I'm telling you ladies and gentlemen that thing grew and grew and grew and now one night in Bethlehem there was birth of her something that the world has never ever seen. What was it birth? Truth had been conceived in her. Nine months later truth was born of her. Glory be to God because truth was conceived in her nine months ago. One night in one starry night in Bethlehem she birthed truth into this world. That's exactly right. She birthed truth. Jesus Christ, the word of God God made flesh was birthed into this world. Listen, some of your families need truth birthed into it. Some of your families need truth born into that home. Your home, your family needs truth born into that conversation. They need truth born around that supper table. There's enough griping. There's enough grumbling. There's enough complaining. There's enough belly aching. Do you know that this one woman that allowed truth to plant that seed in her womb. Nine months later, she birthed truth into the world. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if we'll let the Spirit of God birth this truth in us, it won't be long until we'll be birthing truth into our family. In the... Woo! Somebody give him praise. Oh, my. Conceived of truth. Yes, Jesus Christ was born into this world as a truth of God personified. He was conceived of truth, born of truth, and he walked in truth. I said he walked in truth. They tried to kill him. They tried to kill him from the time he was a baby. When Herod said, we're going to kill him. Amen. Are you listening to me? They were going to throw him down a hill, but he escaped. He wasn't worried. Didn't bother him at all. You know why? He knew truth. He knew that truth had a plan. This world has no plan. Lies change every day. Every day you listen to the lie of the devil, there's a new one tomorrow. Every week you walk in lies, there's a new one tomorrow. But when you get truth, 
when that truth is born in you, it's there today. It's there tomorrow, and it'll be on. She birthed truth into her world, and then truth started walking in her world. Glory be to God. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all that were born, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. She birthed truth. Her truth, the truth that she birthed into this world, went to a wedding feast and turned water into wine. The truth that Mary birthed into this world, ladies and gentlemen, was down by the seaside. And he fed them all. That truth fed a multitude with fish and loaves. Oh God, Mary birthed truth into this world and that truth found a woman. Mary Magdalene and cast the devils out of her. Mary birthed truth into her world and that truth found ten lepers and healed every one of them. I wish somebody would say amen. Mary birthed truth into her world and that truth met a mother coming out of the city of Nain with a dead boy. That truth gave her her boy back and she went home again. Mary birthed truth into her world, ladies and gentlemen, and that truth cleaned the temple. Mary birthed truth into her world, and that truth shed his blood that I could be saved and that you could be saved. If Mary birthing truth into her world could cause men in a boat not to drown, what in the world will truth do if we can birth truth into our family, birth truth into my God, somebody get your hand up and say, God, my family needs truth birthed into it. I've got children that are believing lies. I've got brothers and sisters that are deceived. I've got wives, husbands, moms, dads, aunts, uncles. Oh, God, let truth be born of me. See it? See a change in our world, in our search for truth. In our search for truth, we look in all the wrong places. I read several years ago, a man by the name of Bishop Pike went to Israel. Went to Israel, an educated man, a religious man, a bishop. He went to Israel. He went into the Judean desert to seek for Christ. He went into that desert looking for Christ. I'm not sure that he was so mentally deranged that he would find a physical Christ. But he went looking for the evidence of a Christ. He found his body dead in the sands of the Judean desert, searching for Christ. I, like Bishop Pike, one day decided I wanted Christ. I wanted to find him. I wanted to know him. I wanted to know the truth about this man. I want to know is it real. I found him. But I didn't go to Judean desert looking for him. No, sir. I didn't die in the sands of the deserts of Judea looking for Christ. I opened my book and found him. I opened the word of God and found him in Bethlehem. I looked a little bit further and found him at 12, uh, oh God, found him at eight days old in the temple when an old man, Simeon, had him in his arms. And Simeon looked up and blessed God because he had seen the salvation of Israel. I saw him in that temple. I found him there. And Simeon said, Let now thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. I searched for him, and I found him in the temple when he was 12 years old. Amen. Mary and Joseph did when a day's journey left him there. Didn't know he was there at all. Thought he was in the company. Found out that night he went and went back to Jerusalem. Searched for him for three days. Found him in the temple. I found him 12 years old in that temple. Oh my God. I found him, ladies and gentlemen, as he walked upon ways. I found him down by the pool of Bethesda, saying, If thou wilt be made whole, take up your bed and walk. You say, Preacher, have you been to the pool of Bethesda? I actually have when we went to Israel, but I'd already found him before I got there. That's exactly right. I prayed to that wailing wall, the last remaining vestige of that temple complex that Jesus walked in but I'd already found him before I got there hallelujah I 
I saw that sea of Galilee that he walked on, but I'd already found him before he got there. I found him, ladies and gentlemen. I found him in Luke chapter 2 when Mary brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger. I found him in John chapter 3 when John, when Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I found him in Matthew chapter 12 when he said, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Oh my God, I found him. I found him at Calvary when he was hanging on that cross and he cried out, Father, forgive them. They know not what to do. And then with a loud voice he cried out, It is finished and gave up the ghost. I found him on an, on an Easter morning when that tomb was empty. I found him on the garden of, on the mount. Oh God, there outside Jerusalem. Are you listening to me? Found him there. Oh God, when he lifted up his voice and went up into heaven from that mount of Hollis, I found him. And there he was. Where'd you find him, preacher? Were you there when he ascended to heaven? Did you see those two men in white apparel? No. No, not at all. I've been to the Mount of Olives, but I already knew him. Where'd you find him? I found him in truth. I found him in the Word of God. I found him right here in this book. And when I found him, ladies and gentlemen, I found him saying, Whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When I found him, I found him saying, I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you say, Preacher, Oh, Mo, I've memorized verses. I've memorized chapters. It's not in memorizing. It's okay to do that. It's not in memorizing the Word of God. It's in obeying the Word of God. You may not can quote Jesus well, but if you'll obey what he said, you're better off than the man that can quote the whole book of Psalms. It's in obeying that Word of God. John 17 lets us know that. Our search for truth is in obeying the Word of God and in walking, imitating the character of Christ. Somebody needs to start a movement again. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do in this current environment? That's exactly right. What did he say? Oh, God, he said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. You find his footsteps, you follow him, and you're walking in truth. Because he tells us where those footsteps lead. And I'm closing, I promise. Come on, Sister Tina. He said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. Come on, Brother Nick. Brother Cody, I think, Brother Tim had to leave. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Here's the Morris commentator. I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man's going to get to heaven unless he walks in my footsteps. That's exactly right. The light, come on, brother Jason. Sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What is sanctification? No man can be sanctified until he knows the truth. Because sanctification is a lifestyle that imitates Christ. Sanctification is a lifestyle that is led by the spirit of truth. If any man is led by the spirit, he's the son of God. The Bible does not tell me what time to get up in the morning. The Bible does not tell me what to do at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. The Bible does not tell me what to do on a Friday night or Saturday night. Say Amen. But the spirit of truth brings me into such a relationship with God where I can say I live. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ liveth in me. He doesn't send me a schedule of my life every morning for every day. But as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What works our sanctification? There are three things that must work in my life for me to live a sanctified life. 
the word of truth versus the words of the enemy. The spirit of truth versus the truth of this world and worship in spirit and in truth. The word of truth versus the word of this world. This world will tell you a lie and laugh in your face. This word will tell you a lie and laugh in you all the way to the nut house. But the word of truth of God will not set you free. It will make you free. The spirit of truth versus the spirit of this world. The spirit of this world says if it feels good, do it. If you love it, and you want it, it's okay. But that spirit will lead you right down to the broad road of destruction and then worship in truth. Oh, God, I don't preach too long. Do you know what most worship is today, what so-called worship is? It's nothing but tantalizing of the flesh. If our worship, oh, play Sister Tina, that'll help me quit. If I don't quit, just get louder. If all our worship is, is a good time and a jump and skip and a holler. If our worship don't sometimes contain tears, it's not true worship. Sometimes, overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. Do you ever love Him enough that it brings tears to your eyes? Not because of what He's done, but because of who He is. Stand with me tonight. He's here. He's here to lead us and to guide us into all truth. There's a lot of voices out there. A lot of voices. Oh, a lot of voices. Father, we love you. Come on. I want you to come. Let's just come. Let's stand around these altars. Let's worship in truth. Let's come and just worship for a little bit. 